Hello, my name is Marko Soela. I work as a project manager at the Seinec University of Applied Sciences and I'm here to give you a lecture recording on the material presented uh, done by my colleagues Jarmo Alarinta and Juuso Kumpulainen. And this is a, a lecture and a presentation on dairy analogs for the EQ Vegan project, the European Qualifications and Competences for Vegan Food Industry. And I hope you find this presentation interesting and useful. So, let's go forward. <clears throat> we want to accomplish the following things during this lecture. So, we want to give you an uh, introduction on the topic. And then we will go through the various uh, vegan dairy analogs that we uh, presented here. And the main, main learning outcomes for this material is that the, uh, the students can make the, um, can tell the difference between dairy and non-dairy products, uh, dairy analog products, and then understand the processes behind these different processes and uh, of course how they, how and by how much they differ from each other. So that's important, and this will also lead to the fact that they will they will be able to design um, dairy uh, dairy analog processes utilizing conventional dairy process equipment. <coughs> so introduction. <coughs> uh, a number of. Uh, an increasing number of consumers are uh, looking for alternatives, especially in plant-based opportunities. And you can see from the from the charts on the right-hand side that the um, interest is is growing. And there's two two main groups of reasons. One is medical reasons for this change from milk to to dairy analog. So they might be lactose intolerant, there might be allergies for milk protein, and of course there might be some um, uh, some people who, who uh, want to take care of their cholesterol, and they think that uh, if they consume too much dairy products, then that will be detrimental to their health. And then of course there are some people who are worried that they might get um, antibiotic residues, for example, with their food. This is, of course, um, not not an actual issue, at least in the European Union, because the, um, the food safety legislation is quite strict on the uh, on residues in in, in food. <clears throat> um, The other main main group is lifestyle choices. So um, people might have um, sustainability issues on dairy products. So um, dairy analogs made from from plant-based products uh, will will have a bit a bit less uh, carbon footprint and lower greenhouse emissions. <clears throat> and of course, if 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 you make um, if you if you make a plant plant based drink, then no no animals were used in in doing it, and this is important for the uh, this is an important thing for a growing number of people. So uh, this is not just a just a temporary thing. This is a, a trend that is continuing to grow uh, with with uh, accelerating pace, and this. Uh, presents an opportunity for companies. Uh, there's a nice potential market niche for these products, and because especially for um, many of the equipment and processes used at dairies are very good in processing also dairy analogs. So this is an easy, easy, easy bridge for many traditional companies to get into the vegan food world. So, about liquid dairy analogs. 
Uh, most of the dairy products we we have on the shelves of in the stores are, are liquid, so milk, either skimmed or semi-skimmed or whole milk, and these are usually pasteurized, standardized, and uh, homogenized. So, and they all all have a uh, very uh, they all have some sort of heat treatment with them. For example, in 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 milk's case, there's two two main ways: high temperature, short time, and then extended shelf life, where the uh, both the time and and the temperature might be a bit bigger, uh, longer. When the milk is packed, uh, it's it's a fresh product, so it needs to get to the uh, point of sale quite quickly, same day. And usually, the shelf life is roughly around ten days, depending on depending on processes and specifications. A pasteurized product is not a sterile product, thus the growth of the bacteria limits the shelf life. So this is also an important thing to keep in mind. If you look at the uh, vegan milk alternatives, uh, these are suspensions of mat uh, plant materials and their extracts in water. And there's quite a lot of variety in the source material. So you can have soy, oats, um, nuts, almonds, legume, legumes, and of course some of the um, some of the Swedish also have done uh, done, done a milk from potato too. Um, <clears throat> most of the time the uh, Dairy analog is done by by grinding the source of protein, extracting the wanted uh, components from it, and separating them. Then dispersal through homogenization, pasteurization, and filling in packages. So this is uh, the, the the products are analogous to to traditional milk, but also the processing of the product is analogous to the traditional milk products and uh, dairy products. Uh, one um, advantage that the uh, vegan products have is that you can use higher processing temperatures for the pasteurization, so the shelf life is extended or, or longer than in, in normal milk. And these also, they don't have the same issue as, as milk that if, if you if you heat treat the milk too much, then it will gain a, a flavor of boiled milk, which is not usually uh, found to be tasty. Here's an example of the <coughs> production production lines for the pro, uh, both the dairy dairy product on the left on the blue, and then the dairy analog on the right and uh, the, the process components marked with three asterisks are exactly the same. So from the end, the packaging is the same machines, the cooling is done by the same machines, the pasteurization is done by the same machines, and the homogenizer is, is an essentially the same machine with the uh, mixing tanks also. Uh, for um, for for milk, uh, it, when when the dairy receives the whole milk, they will separate it, uh, separate the fat from it, and they will have two two tanks. One will have skimmed milk, and the other will have cream. And the, uh, these will be standardized. Some um, depending on the process, uh, some of the cream might go back in to the, uh, the the milk or the, the, or the fat back into the milk, but uh, uh, this is dependent on the uh, dairy. After this, this point, uh, it will be homogenized, pasteurized, cooled and packaged. If we look at the uh, protein version or, or the vegan version of this, we can find that um, the, the protein will be uh, grinded and extracted using wet milling, 
and this will be this will be mixed and from that um, there might be some auxiliary agents for for further helping the processing after that it will go to a, a decanter so that we can separate the components that we want uh, from the components that we don't want so for example in if we are doing an old drink then during the decanting process most of the uh, non-soluble fiber hulls for example from the uh, oats is uh, separated and this is sold as animal feed after after separating it to the components or the desired components there might be an ad addition of oil to make it uh, a bit more tastier and functional and then it's the same exact process as with the uh, liquid milk so homogenizing pasteurization cooling and packaging Moving on, here we can find a comparison of soy milk and uh, cow milk by the nutritional values. Um, the macronutrients nutri are mostly similar. There's a big difference in, in the uh, total sugar content. Uh, but if you look at the uh, nutrients and minerals, there's a bigger difference. So our milk will have quite a bit of iodine. And, and calcium and these are um, well for, for iodine it's non-existent in soy milk and uh, for for calcium it's not not good either uh, for other other nutrients the uh, situation is similar so if you look at just the uh, difference in in these two then you can say that the milk is uh, is more nutrient dense but at least in in the um, mo in most of the European Union uh, there is no acute lack of nutrients so this is not as a big big of an issue as might the numbers show fermented dairy analogs so how to make it uh, uh, ferment fermentation has been a way of, of preserving milk for quite some time and uh, this is also um, an interesting uh, dichotomy between uh, vegan products and, and dairy products if you look at the uh, process uh, there is uh, a bit of a bit less of adding ingredients in dairy but uh, in, in big, uh, if you want to do a vegan version then you you need to use quite a bit of adding uh, um, agents to aid the structure and processing of the material <laughs> For, for dairy analogs uh, or fermented dairy analogs, uh, it's important to keep in mind that many of the properties of fermented dairy products are uh, because of the unique properties of milk proteins and fats. And uh, for this reason, um, uh, the, the coagulation is not quite quite similar with many of the uh, plant-based alternatives and these need <coughs> various various added ingredients to make it happen here is a uh, process chart for for for, for com comparing dairy analogs and dairy so if you have um, a really similar process uh, but the trick is to use different bacteria and uh, in, in 
Um, with milk, you can use Thermophilus or Bulgaricus with, with oats and soy, just the Bulgaricus. Uh, then you also need stabilization agent, so some suggestions are potato and maize, uh, or maize starch or potato protein. Otherwise, the process is rather sim similar between these two. Now here's a, a comparison of, of soy, soy yogurt and then two kinds of milk, uh, dairy yogurt, so whole milk and low-fat low fruit yogurt. So the same thing that we had over at the uh, milk comparison is true also for this. So uh, the uh, the milk uh, or the or the dairy dairy product has better nutrient density than the, the soy alternative. But roughly, if you look at look at the numbers, they are um, they are quite um, quite okay for the macronutrients. So it's important to keep in mind when um, doing a, if, if you do a complete vegan diet for the whole time, then you must take care that the nutrients and minerals and so on will be adequately uh, gained from the nutrition. Uh, this is not something that's usually an issue with with uh, animal-based proteins or products or dairy products because then there's the uh, usually the uh, micronutrients and minerals are in in apple volume. About cork, cork is a popular product at least in Finland. So. Um, it's a form of fresh cheese. Uh, again, a bit of a process chart. So, um, fresh cheese is, or quark is done just by adding a, a, just a little bit of rennet. And then there's the concentration phase where we try to get the dry matter quite, quite high. Because uh, quark is quite um, sour, uh, it might have uh, um, if if the sour the sourness might change a bit, so this limits a bit of the shelf life, which is otherwise 25 days. If you compare it to the uh, vegan version, uh, then you have to do a bit of a a bit more, so. Uh, depending on depending on the feedstock, you need to uh, uh, standardize the fat amount, homogenize it, ferment it, then mixing it with the correct ingredients and addi additives. So, of course, ingredients to for the taste, but also for the structure and uh, and uh, texture of the product. Here is a <clears throat> here is a, a process chart chart of the same, and uh, in the in the in the dairy process, there's an additional phase of separating the water and whey from um, uh, when when we do um, standardize the dry matter in the quark. In in the vegan process, this is, this step is exempt. Here you can see <clears throat> some uh, comparison between different uh, products. So these are the top row uh, is from uh, the well the classic classic quark from Valio, a local dairy dairy company. And this is this is plain. It's not flavored in any way, and it's um, it's sold as low fat. Um, you can see the protein content is quite high, it's already 10, 10, 10 grams. Low fat 
carbohydrates 3.7 and then um, no other um, nutrients other than calcium uh, the flavored quark has quite a lot higher energy density because it has also quite a bit more of sugar and fat. And uh, this is something that the uh, plant based versions try to mimic. So if you look at the third from the top, this is from Alpro and it's a soy based quark. It has. Um, uh, an okay protein value of 5.8 and uh, an accept acceptable of amount of fat 3.3 compared to the 7 of the flavored value quark or but of course the non-fat version is best in this case and uh, for all pro uh, the, the quarks both the, the natural and the, the flavored version they both have um, B12 vitamin that's uh, fortified to the products. And the lowest row is then uh, Fatseri Osa. Fatseri is a local uh, Finnish company also that does uh, quite a varied, uh, has a quite a varied repertoire of, of foods in the uh, production. But uh, they also do an oat based, oat -based pork. Uh, this has um, a nice um, comparison for the soy based products. Then about cheese. Um, cheese, uh, cheese products is um, a classic way of preserving milk. And there are seven categories that you can see over there from the um, uh, various parts of and the, the types of cheese and their var, uh, various origins in the world and uh, most of the process for cheese is quite quite same so uh, yeah, it all all has to do with the coagula coagulation of, of milk for the forming of the, the curd and uh, to get the uh, Primate content up, they also remove the whey from the cheese. And there's uh, quite a variety on the processing length of, of cheese, so it can be anything from 20 days to 800 days. So it's a it's an interesting interesting product. Uh, the fatty acids uh, contained in the cheese are one of the limiting factors for the shelf life. Um, for for cheese analogs, so, almost only viable currently is the uh, quark analog. So it's um, um, well, most of the other vegan cheeses are quite difficult. Uh, well, it is difficult to mimic the properties of a good uh, uh, dairy-based cheese using just plant-based uh, plant-based materials. So this is some something that um, needs to be said that it's it's not as straightforward as the other dairy analogs. Although basically the uh, the process for manufacturing vegan cheese and dairy cheese is, is um, you could say the vegan cheese is, is easier to do or at least it has less steps in its process. <clears throat> so here's uh, some uh, comparison of uh, nutrients. So we have a cheddar cheddar cheese on the top line and then we have two two forms of uh, um, vegan cheese so we uh, included tofu in this because it's well it's quite close actually it, you could say it's soy cheese also 
and if you uh, look at the nutrients there's um, um, excluding the soy uh, or excluding the tofu cheese you can see that the, they are roughly similar of course again the nutrients are um, the micronutrients are in favor of the uh, of the dairy cheddar but at, at the same time it's uh, if you need your micronutrients from just cheese then it might not be a good diet as such spreads so um, vegan fat products have quite a different process and equipment compared to ordinary butter so vegan fat products are made by mixing a water soluble, soluble mixture um, to a fat soluble, soluble mixture with surface heat exchanger these additives that are used are, are, are emulsifying agents hydrocolloids colors aromas and so on um, And if you if you look at at the shelf life issue, then for fresh butter it's six months, and for vegan spreads it's two to five months, depending on the product. Um, butter could uh, could keep for quite some time, but it at, uh, eventually it will change the taste, and this is the limiting factor. Um, so where the taste is the issue in, in butter shelf life, then there's the uh, issue of, of potential contaminants that you could have in vegan, vegan, vegan butter or mar margarine. Some uh, comparisons again, for margarines, uh, the, the nutrients are quite close to each other of course there's uh, a bit better um, balance of, of unsaturated and polyunsaturated um, fatty acids so uh, in summary the appearance and the character of and the structure uh, these all can be made so that it's uh, it re resembles the real deal uh, the taste might be uh, uh, difficult to overcome so for example we have a we have a company in Finland that does uh, alternative proteins and products from uh, uh, fava bean broad bean and uh, this uh, broad bean has quite a distinct flavor so and it's it's not as um, if you use it in as a substitute for milk then uh, if you if you're doing a pastry or if you're doing something that requires milk as an ingredient then the the leguminous taste will come through from the fava bean product We have prepared a summary table of the main of, of our dairy product, then a vegan analog for it, the product technologies that are used, and then something about the process technology used. And uh, uh, something that some things that I want to um, um, raise up from this this slide is that um, for for other products in the in the in the food industry especially uh, in, in dairy and in, in meat and in, in baker products uh, it's it's been uh, already quite some time that you could always always trust on the contents of what you buy and but uh, if you look at the this part this part here in the quark 
where uh, it is stated that uh, because it has quite a lot, uh, quite a, quite a lot more than more products needed to make it happen instead of milk, then it also needs uh, um, recipe control. So it's important to keep in mind what version and what version of the recipe people were working on, and also uh, because many of the batches of, of, for example, the broad beans, they are still uh, done uh, done in quite small scale. So that you couldn't, depending on the batch, you might have different different dry matter rate or different macronutrients, and these all affect the processing of the product in your your production line. Finally, uh, a list of um, references are reading. So, and these are also with uh, with links as a separate um, separate file in the in the Moodle and the Google Drive. For my part, I want to thank you that you have taken the time to listen to me. I'm I'm I hope this was helpful for you. And um, for my part, I was glad to be able to give you this lecture. Thank you. Bye-bye.